Racer 9 GT. I've got a little bit of a, I don't know, not an issue with this bike, but I have in the past. I rode the original 9 900 GT it was called then, now it's called the, the 9 GT. To be honest, I, I also rode the, the very original, the non-GT version, just uh, the MT-09 Tracer, I believe it was called, the first one. So I've ridden all variants, and to be honest, I've never really liked the bike. <laughs> I know some people might not like that, because it's just raved about. People really like it, but it's just one of those things. It's nothing against Yamaha, it's not a bad bike. It's just one of those things that doesn't vibe with me. I, ju I just don't get it. I've actually got this bike for a loan bike, because I've taken my personal motorbike in for a service. Blade Motorcycles in Swindon have very kindly lent me this Tracer 9 GT. So I thought I'd do a bit of a review on it. I've been riding it a fair bit now, and I'm getting to know it a bit more. It's not my my favourite motorbike but I've come up with five good points and five bad points and now I've ridden it more I am warming to it there are some definite really strong points of this bike that's really good I have this Tracer 9 GT for the next couple of days I've ridden it a fair bit actually in the past and just a quick video here on the Tracer 9 GT five good points of the bike and five not so good points of the bike that I've managed to find out over the past few days. So if you're interested, you got your eye on a Tracer 9 GT, stay tuned. We're gonna go in depth. All right, so on to the first, let's start with the positives. The first good point, straight in with it, is the handling. It handles really nicely on those 17 inch inch wheels front and rear and it's also due to another point which is a good point but we'll get on to that later the handling of this bike is really good i think it's much more geared towards sporty riding i mean it's not a adventure bike style it's, it's got no intentions of going off-road this most bike really nice and agile and actually being higher up and being flickable it sort of over accentuates the flick if that makes sense but also coming into corners bigger corners it's very neutral and uh, confidence inspiring around the corners so coming on to the first bad point of the Tracer 9 GT. Sorry, I've got to go with the bad points, but stick with me because actually there's a lot I've learned about this bike that's interesting. First bad point, maybe this is just my size and build. I, I mean, it could be, or it could be because I've jumped off my personal bike, Triumph Speedmaster. I've got the comfort seat. It's just so comfy and squishy, that seat, it's so nice. The seat is, is a little bit hard and uncomfy, actually. It, it, I found even just picking it up from the dealership, maybe I need to get used to it. When I was riding from the dealership, about an hour's ride, I was quite uncomfortable on, on my uh, backside. Quite a hard seat, and I find it actually, I, I sort of, uh, when you're riding, this is my riding position, it sort of pushes you forward, me forward, quite a bit into the tank. I just find it a little bit, little bit uncomfortable, but that may be a personal, um, my dimensions, human being dimensions. On to good point number two, and this is actually a really good point of the bike. One of my favourite points is the suspension, which ties in with the first point, the handling. It's really good suspension for a bike of this price. You're getting premium, and it's KYB, fully adjustable, automatic suspension, front and rear, which is, is really clever. So, apologies, did I say the um, suspension was fully adjustable? I meant semi-adjustable, KYB semi-adjustable front and rear and it adjusts the damping it's really clever so you can go into the the modes here on the dash and when you configure your different rider modes one two three four it actually changes the damping of the front and rear suspension automatically in those modes and you can you can definitely feel it actually and that is one point that's having ridden the bike for longer and got some experience on it, it's actually warmed me up to the bike and, and uh, I'm getting to get a feel for it and really getting to sort of realise what, what, what it's about and why people like it. Rightio, coming on to bad point number two. Straight out with it, it's the, uh, the dash, the dash setup, the split screen. I don't mind the split screen too much, that's not really the problem. You get used to that and it, I find that sort of works. It's more than just it's too complicated. It took me a good 45 minutes to work out how to change the riding modes properly. Uh, once you've got the hang of it, it works, it's all right but it takes a while to get the hang of and yeah, it's just over complicated. 
So just stopped off at this uh, nice little pub I just riding past. Thought it was a good chance, just a brief look at the dash, why I find it so complicated. So turning the dash on, I mean, I, I really don't mind the split screen now, as I was saying, I'm, I'm used to that. It's not really a problem, but it's just the, the intricacy of, of everything that's going on. When you're riding, it's just a little bit too much. Along with the dial, you have the whiz wheel. This is another real, real hate. You have the whiz wheel on your right hand, right hand, your throttle hand, which is just, I, I don't understand why they didn't put that on the left and possibly the cruise control on the right, um, because you can't really adjust it whilst you're riding along. You have to come off the throttle and adjust it, which is, is, is a bit of a strange concept. To change the rider modes, I finally worked it out. You have to hold down the mode button here and then you can flick up and down there but then you can also there's like a sub menu that you can you can go into down here and adjust the traction control as well so yeah it's, it's just a little bit over complicated we're getting up the list a bit now on to good point number three and this is the best point about the bike to be honest it took me a while to get used to it and its characteristics because it's not usually my style of motor oh, i just gave the game away point number three it's that, it's that engine, that CP3 triple 900cc motor. It's a bit of a weapon to be honest. Initially, this is I, I struggled with the engine. I didn't get it. Everyone was like, oh, the, uh, the MT09 triple, the CP3 is an absolute peach. I w really wasn't into it. It was not for me but having spent time with it and got used to it it's a really nice package if, if you want to relax on the bike you can just buzz along it's probably going a bit fast back there uh, sorry about that you can buzz along at low revs 3000 rpm and it's just very smooth relaxing you can pottle around town it's not making you need to feel eager if you know what i mean but knock it down a bit And rev it up to 9,000, 10,000 RPM and it's an absolute riot. It sounds great as well, it's got a lovely induction noise. Another thing on the engine, just before we get to this point, when you move rider mode, so I'm in rider mode 3 at the moment because it's a little bit damp, you put it in rider mode 1. It's quite frankly brilliant. And along with that KYB semi-active suspension, it tightens the suspension up at the same time, transforms the bike into, into something really nice. Great motor. Right, on to bad point number three after that beautiful motor and beautiful sound. And I suppose with the, the price, it's over 12,000 pounds. Um, it's a good package this, but quality of the switch gear, they've got to cut corners somewhere to be able to make it so affordable with all of this technology on the bike. Quality of the switch gear, the passing light, the, the whiz wheel on the right hand side, it's just all a little bit um, plasticky to be honest. It's like black plastic and it, it doesn't feel that quality when, you, when you're you know, pushing the button, it's not got a quality feel to it. I don't like that switch gear. It's, I know it's a small thing, but when you're pressing them that much, you do notice it and it gives the whole vibe of the bike, not the best overall quality feel. Good point number four. And quite frankly, this is up there with the engine. I, I was literally, it's the best one I've ever used on any motorbike, the quick shifter for changing. Quick shifter up and a, a rev, rev match on the downshift as well. You can do it, any revs, any gear and it is just so smooth into gear it's it's the best one i've ever used like i said it i'm really really impressed with the uh, quick shifter let's get on the road i'll um, demonstrate what it's like yeah so the quick shifter really is something special on this bike it impressed me as i say it's the best one i've ever used let's have a little blip up here and i'll just show you how quick it is any literally any gear you can go from first to second you can be low revs high revs it's just so smooth box to six there and then down it blips it just rev matches perfectly very very nice mega strong point of the tracer 9 gt 
Okay guys, on to bad point number four. Now, this might sound a little bit contradictory, contradictory uh, actually, but bear with me on it. Now it's down to the motor, but whether it's actually the motor or it's just the way the bike is put together, and it, it's a big factor in initially why I, I never got on with the bike originally. It's vibrations through the handlebars and the foot pegs at higher speeds. Now, I've got to be honest, even through the handlebars now going 38 miles an hour, it's not really bad, but it's just something I, I, I really don't, don't get on with. I, I, get, I am getting used to it the longer I ride the bike, to be fair. And it's a quick vibe as well. Like, it's on the motorway yesterday coming coming back from the dealership and it just it got a little bit buzzy for me all all in the handlebars and a little bit through the pegs and it just the whole vibe of the bike it doesn't ooze quality which is fair at such a good price for everything you're getting then they have to cut corners in places but it, the bike overall bike and down to do down to those vibrations could be a little bit of a better overall quality package i feel Ah, good. This lorry's going with those massive rocks on. Little stretch of dual carriageway. It just, it leans in and handles so well. <laughs> it's fun. It's so much fun, but it's those vibes just at the higher speeds and a little bit at lower. I mean, they would really get to me on a tour. So, coming on to point number five. Good point number five. And it may sound like a simple one. When you get a, a good set of them, I really, really appreciate it. I think it makes a big difference. And it's the mirrors. How I describe it, it's sort of a diamond shape, I suppose, but they poke out at the end here. And you just got really good visibility through them, which um, I really appreciate. <laughs> Uh, and they're adjustable, obviously, but they're, they're very easy to adjust um, to, to fit your height and your shoulder width, etc. And I've just immediately hopped on, set them on, and I great, can see everything out the rear view. And when you're on the dual carriageway and motorway, etc., they're, they're really good as well. Coming on to the final bad point, bad point number five is the wind protection. Sorry if I'm shouting, <laughs> it's the wind. I've seen other reviews of people completely slating the wind protection on this. I, I actually, I don't think it's that bad. It, it's definitely a weak point of the bike. The, the screen itself, the adjustability is great. One hand, well I say one hand, yeah there you go. One hand down, one hand up, on the fly. Really easy, but yeah, I'm getting a lot of um, wind blast and buffeting to the top of my head and actually coming around to my shoulders as well. It's sort of knocking you around a bit. It's not the best wind protection. So, loath to finish on a bad point for this bike because I've grown to quite like it. Whether I'd have one myself, different question, but I see the appeal of it. it is, it's a really fun motorbike. And let's finish on a good point. An extra bonus good point, number six. The brakes are really good. Up front, it's two disc, 298 millimeter, four piston Nissan calipers. And yeah, they're, they're really nice brakes. They're not mega sharp, but they're really nice and progressive on the lever. Nice and light and they're not grabby, they're not too sharp, they're not wooden, they're, they're, they're really good brakes. I've sort of overlooked it because they've been so good, I've put so much trust in them. So there you have it, for overall, for 12,195 thousand pounds, British pounds. I don't know whether I would have it personally, but that's, it's a really good value for money. For that type of money, you're getting a lot of electrical, um, equipment, cruise control, ABS, traction control, adjustable riding modes, heated grips, you can get heated seats, you know, you've got the lot. I actually think it's really good value for money and that engine is sweet. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you like the big guys, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It massively helps. Have a good week, have a good weekend, wherever you are. Stay happy, keep riding. All the best, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao Bella.